what's going on folks? All right, so uh, episode two of our one and a half million card adventure. I'm glad you guys are sharing it with me. Thank you so much for subscribing and commenting. So I'm gonna walk you through plenty of cards today, but I wanted to answer a question uh, and I'm gonna try to do this every video. And the first question that kept popping up was, how do you figure out value for some of these lots? When you go, when you go check out a collection, what are some things that you should look for? And I'm gonna to share to you a couple of things that I always do when I'm trying to value these very quickly because a lot of times you walk in here, and you, you go meet a guy and he's trying to sell off stuff and you don't have the time to sit there and figure out values for all these cards. And there's a lot of times where you're gonna walk in and there's gonna be lots and lots of 3,200 count you know, boxes and 5,000 count boxes. And you have, to, you have to real quickly kind of just ballpark a number. And so there's a few things that I do. And the first thing that I do is understand eras you have to understand what the kind of frame of eras is so if you have late 80s early 90s stuff you know like you basically have to be given that stuff there's a lot i mean there's basically zero upside um but if you have a lot of pre-80 stuff pre-70 stuff and you get much older like into deeper vintage you have a lot of upside um and then you look for kind of the late 90s you know did, did he buy you know collector's choice okay or did he buy fleer ultra metal you know, the gold labels, the things that parallels will really make a huge difference if you can find a way to uh, to kind of sort through that stuff. Um, and then modern stuff, that's always tough because there's a lot of it. You look for the big the big eras, right? The early 2000s were tough. Uh, you get into the, you know, the 05 to 010, you get a lot of great basketball stuff, some good baseball stuff. And then football gets kind of interesting, you know, from 2000, basically from 2000 and then 2010 and beyond. Um, so there's some suggestions on eras. Make, make sure you understand quickly eras. All right, num number two is I, I always try to figure out if there's a few cards in there that get me to halfway. I wanna know what three to five to 10 cards that I can see immediately that will get, we, get me about halfway to the, to the number I wanna be at. Um, and then I think, okay, how quickly can I get back to break even? Because the biggest thing with these lots especially larger lots, is you want to get back to break even as fast as possible. Because when you're, when you're at break even and you've got your money, you recouped it, you have kind of the freedom, the flexibility to, to sell things slower and to sell things in a way that allows you to kind of maximize profit. But when you're tight and you, and you, you feel like you're kind of under, you're in the hole the whole time, you don't, you don't manage the collection the way you should. So get back to break even as quickly as possible. And the easiest way to do that is to figure out identify those cards as you're looking through them that get you to halfway. Um, and so in this particular lot that we're looking at, this one and a half million, I saw those five to six cards and, uh, and thankfully he had pointed them to me and, and advertised them and I, I kind of knew that number. So that you kind of work backwards from there. All right, so that's number two. Number three, uh, I always try to get a number from them. Like it, it, it kind of goes without saying, you wanna, when you're negotiating, you wanna ask them to tell you what number are you comfortable with? Sometimes they won't tell you and that's okay, but help by them telling you something, giving you a ballpark, it helps you kind of frame the way you look at the cards, right? If it's, I want $20,000 for this lot, well, then you know you have to go see like legitimate things and you're gonna need a little more time. So even before you go see a collection, you kind of want to know where their head is. Um, and I always like to ask, and I, sometimes I've done a poor job of this, if we come to a number today, are you going to sell it? Uh, because you don't want to walk in there and be surprised or be super far off from what they were expecting. So always ask what number you want to be at because then you can kind of work around that and, and, and kind, of, kind of frame your time. You can plan your time to, uh, to kind of work, work according to that number. So it, again, it goes without saying, but a lot of people don't ask. Just ask, what, what number do you want to be at that, that you feel good about that you're, you're not going to lose any sleep over? And then I'll, I'll kind of work around that. Um, so that's number three. All right, number four, and this depends on eras for sure, but you wanna see as many penny sleeves and top loaders as you possibly can. If you don't have a chance to go through the cards, that's, that's understandable, because a lot of times there's, there's, you don't have time to do it or there's too many, but if you can start to pick up on the way they took care of their cards, it will allow you to be a little more flexible with your number. Uh, this particular collection stood out to me because a lot, of, I mean, I would say a majority of the cards were in penny sleeves or top orders. I mean, it's, it's that crazy. I feel like I have thousands of dollars in just these supplies that I bought 
Uh, and so I, I, you just kind of keep that in mind. And I know that if I do come across a card or cards, I know they're gonna be probably taken care of and I have a legitimate chance of being able to grade it. So uh, I, I, I absolutely factor that into my number, look at condition and kind of know that my upside goes up quite a bit if, if condition was a high priority for them. So the four things that I always take into consideration when I'm pricing, eras, look for eras, know your eras the best you can. The, the way to do that is to watch videos like this, study up and know what to look for. Um, uh, number two, always kind of have in mind those three or four cards, those 10 cards that'll get you to halfway and have a plan for how quickly you can get back to break even. Um, give, you, give you the freedom to enjoy and maximize your purchase. And if you don't have a plan to get to break even, if you don't see break even, then don't take a gamble and hope you get something because you'll be so frustrated that you're always behind the eight ball. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. Number three, ask them a number. Ask them, ask them, ask them. It's a great point of discussion. It's a great way to kind of understand where their head is. And number four, pay very close attention to condition. Even if you don't check out the cards, look at condition, look at penny sleeves, look at how they, they stored them in books, and that'll help you kind of come up with a number that makes sense to you. Um, okay, so there's four tips for you. Uh, some of you are experts and you already know this. Some of you are novices and have never done this. So hopefully that helps. But let's have some fun. Let's go do some, some cards today, all right? Let's do it. All right, so other things that he did really well, you know, about all these thousands and thousands of rows of cards, he, he did a good job of organizing a lot of them. So, you know, you can see, you know, here, it's by, it's alphabetical. And I mean, I got a row of Griffies that, that is a thousand cards. It looks all the way back to here. A thousand Griffies. It's crazy. I mean, some funky stuff too. Like, I can't remember this stuff. What is this? Mother's Cookies. <laughs> okay. Apparently there's an autograph version or maybe you're supposed to take it and get it autographed. I don't know. Um, you know. Oh yeah, mid 90s. Goodness gracious. So I, the first, the first few I grabbed a second of a, a second ago had just a load of good stuff. So, I mean, check out the old, you know, the gold medallion, Griffey, big time card here, the Centurion, the finest. I, I believe that's, I wanna say it's gold, it's numbered. It's numbered to 500, pretty popular. Ionix, numbered to 750, it's the reciprocal. Oh man, and then of course, how, how can how can you not like this? The hot gloves are an insanely popular, hard to grade insert. And he paid 30 for it, but I I wanna say that's probably 100 or $200. And if you slab it, it's probably even more. That's just a great card. Um, he paid $4 for the, the, the titanium. That's uh, the titaniums, the die cuts were, were still highly sought after. That's, that's a great one. You got the, the Leaf Studios Master Strokes. Number to 5,000. This one's interesting to me because it, it just looks like it's completely faded. The protector film's still on it. It's finest leading indicators, not numbered, but I'm really curious if there's if there's an interest in that one. That's uh, the characteristics. Love the, the Chinese characters on it. Kind of makes it different. Um, so yeah, then you got, obviously you got this good old standard finest. No, no refractors or anything. I know refractors were so hard to, to hit, especially in, you know, early, what is this? 90, it's 94 finest, right? Yeah, 94 finest, that uh, iconic set. Plenty of those diamond heroes. Great stuff, right? Stadium club, just at the break. Kind of pre-chrome, that's the, that's the the foil, the pulsar, the pulsar of the day. And it just goes on and on, right? Where there's this, there's another one, number to 10,000 leaf, limited. I love this, I love this era. Griffey, you can't beat, you know, Griffey, the Topps Chrome Fortune 15, just a su superb um, insert, man. Love it. Uh, and then of course you had die cuts, some die cuts back back in the day. And these these were, because they had the 94 standard SP, which was not a die cut. Then you had the die cut SP version. And then here you go, you got uh, the universal language 
98 Fleer Metal Universe. Uh, again, another card that die, the die cuts these were were pretty difficult to hit and they were definitely difficult to keep in good condition. So he had all these in sleeves already. Some great stuff there. So there you go. There's some Griffies that I got to put in some top loaders and have a good time with. You know, then over here we got, you know, just stacks and stacks of magazines. If anybody is into collecting old Beckett's or, uh, you know, some of these random magazines, I'm happy to take care of you, hook you up. Yeah, then down here you got, you know, season ticket, no, World Series tickets. Now that's pretty cool. Division Series, dang. World Series. Yeah, that type of stuff just, just sticks out to me. I love that. Those type of random things. Um, anybody into the old Donruss Studios? <laughs> 97 portrait stuff. Um, Full-fledged inserts. What do we got going here? Gary. George Carl. That's neat. Good old George Carl. Playboy's 1974 preview. All American defensive team. Hmm. Yeah. All right. What do we got here? Somebody signed that. Looks like maybe, maybe George Stratton. <laughs> any any market for these <laughs> what is this oh geez sharing the victory look at that tom landry autograph wow fellowship of christian athletes tom landry sharing the victory i'm assuming that's an auto i can't I guess i can't really tell but based on what i've seen before in this stuff more fellowship of christian athletes 1988. Gosh, look at those jerseys. Looks like it's in the 50s. Steve Largent. Pretty neat. Those are some cool things. Classic car magazines. Um, all kinds of fun stuff there. If anybody wants any of this, let me know. This is very unique stuff that I'm just really not that interested in. So let me, uh, let me show you some more stuff. And then kind of moving on, right? I did come across uh, a few comics. Looks like first edition Tiger Man. Uh, this is not my world, guys. So if you want these, or if you if you have a need for these, let me know. Jungle Adventures, Prez, origin story, the making of the Prez. My love, a boy, a girl, and my broken heart. Hmm, that's okay. Um, and then look, I. As I sorted through just another box a second ago, came across some, some great stuff. Probably thinking, okay, what's so great about that, right? It's just a Sean Kipp Z4, it's not even his rookie year. These are the Raves, baby. A very difficult, very difficult parallel to find in the 97, 98 Skybox set. This is a 363, 399. They stand out, obviously, because you got the glittered Z and you got the glittered names, but... Um, in pristine condition. Again, when I mentioned this at the beginning, condition is everything with uh, with some of these eras. And then, look, I just, I get it. Not super high end, but base rookies of some of these guys that I just don't have, right? Artest, Baron Davis, Corey Maggetti. Just stuff that I, I would have never bought, but now that I have, I'll probably add some, you know, Ray Allen rookies. Um, the old school Masters of the Hardwood insert. And then a whole stack here of you know magic cards. If anybody wants magic cards, and if you watch this and want it, I just looked at it and said, you know what, this is not for me. So yeah, I'm just I'm happy to hook you up, and you can you can take them and use them. Um, so there you go. And then I came across this here a little bit ago, a, a Ronald Reagan autograph. Um, hmm. So yeah, how about that for uh, for a day's work? We well, hope you've enjoyed uh, this. We'll we'll be back with another episode here in a few days and showing you some more stuff. Um, lots to unpack. I'm going through the vintage so I can walk you through that over the next few days. Thanks so much. Yes.